Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I'm Sarah, this is No BS Beauty. So I've got kind of a different video today. Um, I was wrong about something, a, a couple of things. Doesn't happen very often, but uh, I was wrong and I wanna admit it, unlike a lot of other people and a lot of other YouTubers, I just wanna admit where I was wrong and back up this new evidence with some uh, research and I will talk about that. I will link to the research below. Um, okay, so in life, I have found it's just easier to admit when you're wrong about something than try and either pretend you were right, pretend you didn't do it, um, try and back up incorrect facts. Uh, so I learned this very young when I was about 19. I was doing um, legislative research, um, independent legislative research, so any parties on uh, healthcare topics. And I was asked to research this one specific law or legislation. And I did it. I wrote it up. And the legislator quoted that information to a constituent and that information was wrong. And who do they get the information from? Me, 19 year old, the youngest person in my field, probably by 10 years doing this. And um, what I made the mistake of doing was I looked at the last published research legislation on this topic instead of looking at the actual most recent legislation that hadn't yet been published and codified in books yet. So I was wrong and you know what? I just admitted it because you know what? It's just easier to admit you're wrong. Nobody's perfect, everyone makes mistakes and it sucks, but it's just better to do that in the long run and just cop to it. So I did that and typically now in the past when I've been wrong, it's just easier than to try and lie or make excuses and things like that. And people in the end typically will respect you and if they don't respect you, then you probably don't wanna be with them or know them anyway. You know what I mean? Because they're not perfect either, nobody is. Okay, so. Supplements, they're a topic I've been pretty negative on. Um, and uh, this also includes collagen supplements. So I'm always paying attention to new research, new studies, because it helps me uh, research ingredients better. It helps me talk about what products are better. It helps me take care of myself better. So, uh, so there's some new research in terms of supplements that have come out in the last few years. So, okay. On to the topic. So adults lose about 1% of collagen each year, and collagen is what keeps us looking youthful. That's why babies have chubby little cheeks. They're plump, firm, beautiful skin. And the older we get, there's less collagen. Our skin is less elastic. It's less plump. It's more wrinkly. It's more old looking. And uh, so it's important to have collagen in your skin. And uh, there's some benefit now studies showing that collagen uh, supplements and peptides may actually be beneficial for anti-aging. A lot of products you'll see will have collagen um, in a title of a product. Like here's this one, Collagen Poor Putty. It has collagen in it, but you just can't apply collagen to your skin and make collagen. It doesn't absorb that deep into the dermis. So you need to break it and make it, make it, uh, firm up from the inside out. You can't do it from the outside in. It doesn't work. Um, except for a few different treatments, lasers and things like that. But um, So during digestion, the amino acids in these collagen, peptides, and protein supplements break down, triggers the body to produce more collagen. Some research shows that certain types of collagen may not break down as much. And then it gets transferred in the body and the skin and cartilage, and which is why also some of these peptides and collagen peptides are being marketed as joint helpers for your joints and things like that. So, um, so uh, there's some research showing that these supplements may be very beneficial and even more so when you use them in, con uh, in conjunction with collagen inducing treatments such as like microneedling. Uh, microneedling uh, creates small microscopic wounds in your skin, which then when it goes to heal, it produces more collagen. So perhaps microneedling in conjunction with Collagen gummies might be a great uh, way to use them together. Um, there's several different types of collagen in your skin. The most common ones in the body are one, two, and three. I guess that makes sense because it's one, two, and three. <laughs> uh, some of these uh, one, two, and three are geared towards skin and some are more geared towards joints, bones, things like that. So one study showed a measurable difference in hair density as well as nail growth after supplementing with collagen and especially collagen in the form of eggshell membranes. And it also has been shown to help with joint pain in athletes that uh, supplemented, especially with this eggshell membrane hydrosylate. So I'm curious what some of these, um, some of these collagen peptides will have different ingredients and I've got recommendations um, because the biggest challenge is 
uh, which brands to trust. There's so many different types of collagen. There's so many different types of peptides, all of that stuff. Protein, I mean, there's so many different types. So I'm a member of a group called Consumer Lab. Um, you pay a membership fee. I, I think it was maybe like 100 bucks or something a year. And then you have access. They test all these supplements. They test all these vitamins, all these different powders, all this stuff independently. So then you can go and find out you know, they'll test it for heavy metals. They'll test it to actually see if it has what it says it is enlisted in the ingredients. And then they'll compare them also on price. So because of that, I've got a few brands that I'm partial to. But it does look like that uh, some of these collagen peptides are actually beneficial for our skin. And especially in the last two years, more and more studies have come on. I will link to them below showing that they're beneficial. And actually, since I've lost weight, uh, my thyroid took over a little bit. I'm not, uh, I'd like to gain a little bit of weight back, especially if I can do it in muscle. So I've been actually taking a lot of protein supplements and things like that, because I think I was pretty low on um, protein before that. You know, before, I mean, like with supplements, I was always like, well, you know, if most people eat a balanced diet, they're probably getting everything they need. But you know what? It's probably not very true. I mean, most of the food we have and we eat, especially if you're looking at like fast food and things like that, I think a lot of the nutrition is just wiped out of them. Um, even if you eat very good, very healthy food, I think it's still difficult to get a lot of these. However, the one thing I will say, I'm still not crazy about biotin in some of those supplements because with that, biotin, and maybe I'll be proved wrong. I could be, and you know what? I'm fine with it if I am. Biotin, typically from what I understand, if you're not deficient in biotin, and most people are not, there's no, you just pee it out. And people take biotin for all these hair and things like that, but I think instead of focusing on biotin, perhaps collagen peptides will be the winner. I mean, I've so in the last like three months, I've started taking a lot of these collagen peptides and proteins. And I will say my skin is feeling better. It feels firmer. And you know what else is weird? I don't have as much back pain as I used to. And I, I for some reason, I, for a while, I, you know, I also take skin restoring ceramides, a supplement, and perhaps that has something to do with it as well. But I'm starting to think that perhaps these collagen, and you know, probably losing weight probably helped too, but I think it's just a combination of all of these things. So, um, okay, so there's a couple of things I will uh, recommend if you're interested in them. And this is based on what I've read from the studies on consumer uh, lab. So Vital Proteins has done very well. They have a powder, which I will link to below, and then this is their collagen gummies. They taste like grape. They're wonderful. They taste good. You have to eat, I think, four of them. And they've got um, collagen peptides from bovine, which I think would be a cow. Um, but there's also other ones you can take for uh, vegan. So, yeah. So, if you're vegan, you probably don't want the bovine collagen peptides, but there's other options. So, and then this one ha it does have some sugar calories in it because it actually tastes really good. So, I'll sit down and have one or two, and then it's like, these are good. I'm going to have the, all four of them. And they're not as expensive. So, these have tested well with the consumer lab. So these are the gummies and their unflavored collagen powder tested well. Actually, most of the products from this brand have tested quite well. So, um, and then there's a, two other brands that I haven't tried, but they did very well in this testing. Uh, Ancient Nutrition Multi-Collagen Protein. I linked to that at CVS. And then the other one, actually I have tried this one, is the U-Theory Collagen Tablets. I will link to them at Target. So those are a couple ones worth considering. Obviously, you don't need to take them. I mean, and if you do eat a pretty healthy diet, you're probably better off. But there are a lot of people that just anecdotally notice. That's probably my experience so far. Three months in, it's, I'm not doing a published research on it. But a lot of these uh, research studies were done by several different participants, several different researchers. So um, it might be really great. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's worth considering adding on. I certainly don't think adding biotin in your routine, unless you're deficient in it, it'll be fine. But um, so in terms of supplements at this point, I'm doing the collagen peptides. This is my third bottle of it. I'm doing protein supplement and then um, my Helio Care, of course, and my skin restoring ceramides. That's what I take for my skin and body. And so far, it's so good. I, I, I think at this point, um, I'm considering adding a glutathione supplement as well because I've heard it can help with. Um, brightening skin and vitamin C is the other one but I think that's in my protein supplement as well and I'll I'll link to those below so you can check them out but I mean obviously you don't have to do it but I mean 
you're thinking of adding something in, if you have sore, sore joints, sore back, sore muscles, it's not, some of these aren't very expensive. I think this is 20 bucks maybe, and it lasts me, uh, usually if I'm good, and I take every four, it lasts about a month, so it's not uh, very expensive, especially if you suffer from sore, sore joints or broken bones. I broke my pelvis in a car accident, I don't know, 18 years ago, and I get stiff and very sore in that area. I've broken three places, and I will say it's a little bit better after adding some of these things in. I mean, and it could be totally anecdotal, or maybe the research is really coming out, and it really is great. So, yeah, so those are my thoughts for today. I've got a couple other things I was wrong about, so we'll talk about those in the future. Um, anything else you think I was wrong about, leave them below, because I know I can identify what I know I was wrong about, but maybe there's something else. Uh, there's a couple other topics that come to my mind, alcohol and skincare and uh, gold and skincare. So, but anything else you think I was wrong about, leave a comment. Or you think I was right about it, leave a comment. So, anyway, okay, thanks so much. I will see you guys more tomorrow. Bye, guys.